Late Night with the Devil by Colin and Cameron Cairns is an original and creative indie feature from IFC Films and Shudder. It has thus far set records for an IFC theatrical release, and though that may seem surprising, you have to remember that indie films such as this, with budgets as low as a million dollars, rarely get theatrical screenings unless they are special events or are released in their hometowns. I don't know what Late Night's budget was, but I have to assume it wasn't the $275 million that the Marvels got. <laughs> Set in the 1970s and treated as a more original version of a found footage film, David Dasmalchian stars in the role of late night TV host Jack Delroy. Now, here's Mr. Midnight, Jack Delroy! Full of ambition, but always in the shadow of other popular late night acts like Johnny Carson. He does everything he can to get his ratings up to be the best, but nothing he tries ever seems to tip him over the edge. After losing his wife to lung cancer, Jack takes a hiatus from the TV business, only to return for one more show on Halloween night. This is when the movie starts to take off. As the guests come on, more and more paranormal events begin to happen, taking the audience on a ride until we finally get to witness a full-blown demonic possession. As the TV set gets more and more dangerous, cast and crew want to leave, but Jack and his producer demand the show go on. As the third act of the film comes to a close, audiences are left to question exactly what happened on the night of the show and who might have really been possessed. The story of Late Night with the Devil is not an unfamiliar tale of ambition, but it's done in a way that is pretty original. The movie looks exactly like a late night 70s TV show and is very nice to look at. It gives that ever unsettling old TV look that keeps you on edge. The problems start when that edging of suspense doesn't have any real payoff. Things start to get a little silly at the end, and it pulled me out of the film that I was all the way into. This is an example of where I think new analog horror techniques could have been utilized to set up some really good scares. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything particularly shocking or horrific to give us that real sense of fear. David Dasmalchian is great as Jack Delroy, and I wish I could see him in more leading roles. Reese Autry is perfect casting for the TV show's sidekick character, and I started to feel really bad for him with all the shit he had to endure. Ian Bliss as Carmichael Haig was great, and I really enjoyed the movie's nod to James Randi, whom that character is unabashedly based off. Overall, this movie is a good offering in the independent horror genre. The first two acts do a good job of getting you uneasy and ready for the horror, but unfortunately the third act doesn't deliver. I'd recommend this movie for first-time horror viewers or fans of the found footage genre, but you're not going to be scared, probably just a little nervous.